Today I'd like to look at a little bit of uh, the lateral skull, uh, and I'll include some sinus series. Uh, really the positioning is the same uh, for both. The only thing that's really going to change too much is the central ray. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the positioning criteria. Uh, we need the intraorbital meatal line parallel to the transverse axis of the image receptor. Um, whether you're using uh, DR, CR, plane film, uh, we need it parallel to the horizontal border. We need the inner pupillary line perpendicular to the image receptor. If not, it, it will uh, have rotation. We need the mid-sagittal plane parallel. Uh, same thing, if, if it's not parallel, you're going to have, uh, you could have tilt, rotation, uh, all sorts of problems. The transverse uh, cassette placement or crosswise cassette placement uh, for the skull, this is really the only view that you should have a crosswise uh, cassette placement. 40 inch SID and your central ray should enter approximately 2 inches above the external auditory meatus. Let's go ahead and look at some uh, other things here. Uh, image critique criteria here. We want the EAM superimposed. We also want the orbital roof superimposed. Which uh, shows you that you're in a true lateral position if, if they are. Uh, the floors and posterior walls of the maxillary sinuses should be superimposed. The mandibular rami superimposed. Now you can also look at the TMJs right here. And the cella tersica should be in profile. Nice lateral view, uh, crisp clean view of the cella. Let's go ahead and critique our first one here. Uh, this one is going to show slight rotation. And I know that because I'm looking at the mandibular rami here. To me, the largest one, if this is a left lateral, the largest one seems to be more uh, posterior, which means it would be the right side. So if the right side is more posterior, we need to rotate the head to the left or more towards the image receptor in this particular uh, view. Notice that the, the bottom border here, the mandible, is not, uh, or it is superimposed. You can't see two separate structures. And the another horizontal structure, the floor of the maxillary sinuses, uh, they still remain superimposed. But any vertical structure, you can tell, is not superimposed, and that's an indication of rotation. I'll just kind of show you this one here. I'm looking at EAMs. Uh, posterior walls of maxillaries, the mandibular rami. Let's look at another one here. This one, uh, what do you guys think? I'm looking at those vertical structures again, the mandibular rami, uh, posterior walls of maxillary, maybe a little off here, but the horizontal structures here, look at this mandible. Um, that's way off. Let's look at our lined picture here. Uh, EAMs, actually I'm going to go back a little bit. EAMs, they're kind of hard to see. I had done a density contrast uh, adjustment to be able to outline those, but they are not superimposed. Looks to me like the largest one, remember we want largest one because it's uh, closest to the tube. The largest one is going to be the left side, uh, which is right here. And the right side is closer to the tube. You get a, a more uh, better detail, crisp, clear outline of the right side. If the left side is inferior to the right on this mandibular rami here, then you know that the left side is, is lower, so there is tilt to the patient's left. No rotation because the vertical structures are in alignment. Because horizontal structures are out of alignment, there's some tilt. So we would tilt this patient's head to the right in order to fix this one. So the next one here. This one you can clearly see EAM. I like this uh, x-ray because you can see a pretty large EAM here, smaller one right here. Um, that, uh, that alone is, is uh, pretty much all you need to tell what's going on here. This looks like tilt and rotation. Uh, the largest one is, is uh, below, uh, inferior, and anterior to the smaller one. Because it's inferior, we know that the patient's head is tilted to the left. 
and because it's anterior to the smaller one, we know that the head is rotated to the right. So two fixes here. We need to tilt the head uh, back to the right, and we also need to rotate the patient's head to the left to move this back in alignment with the other EAM. I think I got some drawings here. Yeah, I did the orbital roofs here and the mandibular rami. Uh, you can tell that they're they're you know they're not superimposed here in either plane. So tilt and rotation. Now when you're uh, when you're centering for sinuses, really the uh, central ray should probably be instead of two inches above the EAM, which would be back here somewhere. You want it halfway between the outer canthus and the EAM, and this is a pretty nice view of the sinuses. Uh, I definitely wouldn't repeat that. You've got uh, sphenoid sinuses right here, right under the cella, ethmoid up through here, and then our maxillaries right here and our frontals there. Uh, you really don't need to include much below the, the top row of teeth there for collimation. Maxillaries are always going to be above those. And then the frontal sinuses can, uh, they can be deceiving. Some of them go right above that superciliary ridge. Some go all the way up to the hairline. So make sure to allow for room for that. Let's look at one more here. Last but not least. Um, again, this is the sinus series. I'm looking at EAMs here. And I kind of outlined them here for you. Uh, you got your mandibular rami here. And orbital roofs here. I don't see too much tilt. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. You know, there's there's a couple indicators. Uh, the, the biggest ones to me would be the EAMs. I think that those, uh, you know, because they're two structures, they should be symmetrical. Um, you can tell a lot just by looking at, at the relationship between those two structures. It looks like there's some rotation. Uh, the larger one is posterior, so that would be if it's a right lateral. The smaller one would be the right side. The larger one here would be the left. If the left is posterior, the patient's head is rotated a little bit to the left. So if you just turn this nose towards the image receptor a little more, it should bring this right in alignment over there.